Hello, my name is Venki Ganti. Today, along with my co-founder Rahul Lahiri, I'm going to discuss how we can shift testing and production left. In doing so, we enable engineering teams to prevent API reversions and detect them early in the development life cycle. There are two big trends, continuous testing driven by DevOps and shift left, as well as the adoption of microservices architecture. These two trends are actually driving engineering teams to take on additional responsibility of automating their test suites. Especially with microservices, the necessity for higher functional test coverage is increasing because of the complexity of interactions among these services. If you take a typical engineering team, there are three test goals before they release a new piece of software or a new version of their software. The first goal is to prevent regressions to existing usage. The second goal is to test and debug new functionality and ideally also automate tests for that new functionality to prevent regressions in future. The third goal is sort of infrastructure testing, where it's sort of performance, load testing, resilience of the infrastructure itself, or resilience of the application, security testing, and so on and so forth. Because of the pressures of the release deadlines and so on, teams rarely get to uh, spend a lot of time on the infrastructure testing aspects. If you look at the current testing approaches, engineers must create all this automation. They must design the test scenarios, must prepare the test data, the test scripts, and maintain them. All of this adds up on their, on their effort that they need to spend and is hugely demanding on their time. Typically, more than 25% of all engineering effort in a, time is, in a team is spent on creating these automated test suites. Despite all this effort, the coverage of these regression tests tends to be limited because there are a variety of constraints, whether it's the the timeliness or the additional new capabilities that they need to deliver for the business to uh, function. All of these limits the amount of testing coverage they can get. The consequence is it slows engineering velocity, whether it is because of the effort they have to put in in the current release or because of bugs that arise in production and they have to root cause and fix those bugs. Regressions in production are more common and consequence of all of this is fell downstream on reduced customer satisfaction or even churn. Because of the criticality of this regression testing issue and the amount of effort that is required with this common approaches, consumer tech companies such as Google, Facebook, and Twitter have come up with a variant which is often called testing in production. The key insight here is to leverage ongoing user activity to validate new versions of the software. In one variant, which is called canarying, a fraction of the traffic is diverted to the new version, whereas the, most of the traffic goes on to the production version. And then they observe top line metrics for the applications such as impressions, clicks, and so on, as well as the, as the system health metrics. If everything looks good, then they slowly ramp up the traffic to the entire user base. In another variant, which is called Diffie, the same traffic is teed between a primary production version and a candidate bill. And the functional responses from the candidate bill are then compared with what is coming out from the primary production version. This comparison has to be uh, functionally possible in that context, the candidate version has to have the exact snapshot of all the backend infrastructure that the primary is running on. Thus, they're able to compare for functional correctness. Both these approaches have the following problem that they're fairly late in the dev cycle. The builds have to be released into the production and the, where the users can be exposed to that new version before uh, they're able to validate these versions. Because of this, they still require a lot of upfront functional testing to detect most of these issues as early as possible. And if the traffic is low, which is especially true for a lot of enterprise applications, we still need a long time to converge. And because the 
both the candidate and the primary versions in, in both Kinnering and for Diffy have to run an exactly identical snapshots of the databases, the infrastructure tends to be pretty, cost tends to be pretty high. Now, the question still stays, can we leverage user activity, especially the past user activity in the context of enterprise applications to shift this testing and production idea to the left. Right? If you're able to do that, then there are significant benefits. The first one is that we're able to get 100% functional regression test coverage right in our CI pipeline. And because of this confidence, we're able to devote much more effort into engineering new capabilities and our velocity will actually improve. However, the significant challenge here is of state consistency between when we captured users activity and when we are testing. So what are the approaches for reconciling this state consistency? A common approach is to snapshot data just before capturing traffic. So we snapshot the entire databases, all the databases that the application relies on, just and then immediately start capturing the traffic for an uninterrupted period of time. When we have to test, we actually restore the data snapshots back to that particular uh, snapshots, relevant snapshots, and start replaying the traffic. Thus, we are able to compare what's happening with the test exactly with what used to happen in production. That's one way. The main problem here is that the infrastructure cost is still very high, especially if you have to bring all of these uh, massive databases up in, in testing. Uh, that's usually a no-go. The second question then we are asking, second option that we are asking ourselves is, can we simulate this state with 100% fidelity uh, where the simulator is much lighter weight than the, all the production databases that you need to bring up? So the question is, is this even possible, especially in our current scenarios where responses to identical requests can be non-equal? Non, non in the sense, if you take a stock ticker service, you ask uh, for the same stock price, uh, let's say Microsoft stock price, every few seconds you get a different response. And in that context, how can we actually simulate the state with 100% fidelity? Uh, you have to really understand the context of the caller as well as the callee before you're able to uh, simulate that. Our insight here is that you can actually leverage tracing um, of the application to simulate these services, stateful services, either databases or other external services with very high fidelity. So let me illustrate this with this with this picture. In the top, we are actually capturing usage, the API traffic in a production system, let's say. And when we are capturing the usage, we inject a trace ID at the gateway request, uh, much like the Jaeger and Zipkin uh, open tracing libraries, as well as APM products such as Neuralic and AppDynamics and so on, uh, right? So the same trace ID that's injected at the gateway request is is propagated to the downstream services for that request which spawns off request to service B and service C and to the database, they all carry the same trace ID. Now all of this usage data along with the tracing is stored in, in a usage uh, database. Now when we have to test it, we bring up the service A, the test driver picks a request, drives it to the gateway and injects the same trace ID that was injected here into that request. The service A receives it, and it spawns off request to service B, service C, and to the database. Uh, and our simulators get this request instead of the actual services, and they, they get the request parameters as well as the trace ID. And they can use both the request parameters and the trace ID to identify the exact response that they need to send back. Uh, so if, if this particular trace ID corresponds to the Microsoft stock price, which receives 131.5 as a response, the trace ID will, will tell us, the simulators, that, oh, it is for this particular trace ID, and even though there are four different candidates that we can respond with, and this is the precise candidate that we need to pick uh, to simulate the context exactly. And that's what enables us to simulate the stateful components with 100% fidelity. So all in all, with that insight, we are now able to sim test in near production very early in our development cycles, almost in our CI pipelines itself. So let me illustrate that with this, 
once more. So you have your application. We put in agents at various levels of the application, whether it's the gateway or between services or from the service to the database. We capture this API traffic along with the trace IDs in our usage database. And when you have a new set of versions of these services that you need to test, our usage drivers drive traffic to the gateway and re-inject the trace IDs that, that, were in, that were introduced in production. And the simulators, all these agents have the ability to simulate the backend stateful services and databases. So consequently, your harness is super lightweight. All you need to bring up is your services under test. So the usage driver will simulate the traffic. The simulators will actually simulate the backend databases. And you're able to drive traffic look at the responses that are coming out of the system under test and compare with the responses that were observed in production. And you now have 100% regression test coverage with very, very little engineering effort from in terms of automation, test automation itself. Uh, consequently, you get 100% regression coverage and you're able to prevent regressions fairly early in your development cycle or detect regressions fairly early in the development cycle. So, the coverage is pretty high. The effort that you need to put in terms of test automation is much, much lower. Because of this, you would get high velocity, engineering velocity, and high quality. Now I'm going to hand off to my co-founder, Rahul Lahiri, who will demo the product. We will now do a demo of the Mesh Dynamics product. With a conventional test process, you will define your use cases, define the test cases, you will create the test data, you will write assertions, and after you have tested them out, you will write the script to automate the test. With Mesh Dynamics, the test case creation, the test data creation, all of that is replaced by the usage capture, whether it's from a test setup or from the production setup. Assertions are automatically created, and the test scripting is unnecessary because our replay driver takes care of replaying those requests so we, for the demo, we will go through three steps. We will show how to create a test, how to run the test and review the results, and finally, how to update the test via data updates. For the demo, we use this application that we call MovieBook. Think of it as an online library system where you can look at all the items that are there. You can look at the details, you can rent them out, you can return them. We have two versions of that application set up. We will use one of the versions to capture the usage, and then we will replay that usage against the second version to identify what has changed. So first, we'll start by creating some tests. This is our demo application. This shows all the items that we have. You can click on one of them to see the details, and you can click on this to rent an item. This is the Mesh Dynamics app. Here you're seeing the service graph of our MovieBook application. So when we capture the data, we will capturing all of the interactions at each of these services, as well as all the interactions with the platforms like databases. So let's start the recording process. Let's create a few test cases. Let's say the first test case I want to create is list all of the items in the library. So when I go to the home page, it lists all of the items that are listed there in the library. Next, let's create a second test case, which is listing one of the items. So I will click on one of these items. Now let's create a third case and rent an item. Now I'm going to click on the one of the rent buttons. I'm going to go through the rent process. Now let's go and stop that. Now we can look at what we have captured. This is the capture we just did. So if I look at the details on that file, there are five different services from which we captured data. And once you pick one of the services, you can see all of the APIs for which we captured the data for. So here we captured data for three of the APIs. We can look at one of the APIs. Here it shows you the structure of the API, it also shows you examples of the API requests. You can look at the examples for the responses. Uh, now let's go back. We had no manual test case enumeration, no manual test data preparation, and we actually interacted with the app, and those became our test cases. 
For the next step, let's run the test and review the results. So now we will run the test using the data that we captured. The test is going against the second version of our application that we have for the demo. And here, these three services are the system under test. We are mocking these neighboring services. So let's start the replay. During the test, our replay driver is picking up the requests from the golden and replaying them in the order in which they appear in the golden. The replay is now complete. Now let's review the results. This is the test we just ran. As you can see, there are five services that got exercised. One of the services had some differences. Let's look at what has changed. So the list movies API gave different results when we ran it against the new version of the software. The left hand side here shows what we got from the original version. The right hand side shows what we got from the test version. This is just a standard GitHub style diff. And for each of those diffs, you can have three things that you can do. You can either say there is a problem and you can go ahead and file a Jira bug with that issue. Or you can change the assertion rules. Or you can update the golden so that the next time you run the test, uh, it uses the new data and it does not generate a diff. So let's say here the actor's last name array, which appears in the original but does not appear in the new version of the software. Let's say that's a problem and you want to file a bug there. So you can go ahead and file a Jira bug. So you can see missing array. In the bug report, we populate the service and the API path as well as the JSON path in which this problem was seen. And we also include the URL, which if you click on the URL, you will see exactly the, what the reviewer saw when they filed the bug. So you can see the bug was filed against this missing item, actor's last name. Next, here the display actors, the data has changed from a first name, last name format to a last name, first name format. And that's the change you have made. So you want to update your data so that going forward, you use this new format. So here I can go and say, update the golden. What this will do is when we save the golden back, it'll take all of the new occurrences of these display actors and replace the old version of the display actors array with the new one. The third thing you can do is change the assertions. So here, for example, in the film counts, you can see the data format has changed from an int to a string. And maybe film counts is something where you don't really want to compare the values. So you can change the assertion to not look at the value and say, just ignore the values. So the next time you run it, it won't generate an error. So now that we have made those changes, let's go ahead and save the golden. So I'll give it a new name. And I will save that. So that becomes a new golden that I can then run the next time. In a distributed services environment, it can get pretty hard to understand where did the differences occur. So we provide this tracing capability, which shows you how that request executed across the different services. So here you can see the movie info service, it called the review service, and you can also see the specific APIs that were called. If there was a difference in one of these, that corresponding row will be marked up, and you can see what the difference was. And you can just click on the appropriate item and you can see what changed in the request or what changed in the response, which makes the debugging process very easy. So that is our demo of the Mesh Dynamics product that we are building to achieve this goal of being able to test in near production much earlier, not having to wait until the whole thing is ready to go into production and also give you a very comprehensive test coverage without involving massive amounts of engineering effort. Thank you.